So here we are, video number four, wrapping up our four-parter, and this also focuses on health relationships, but this now does a little more external look. So the video three was more about how, who are we, self in relationships. Now we're looking at people that you're in relationship with. How are the relationships? Are they healthy? Are they healthy? Do you feel good? Do you feel loved? Do you feel valued? What kind of people are you drawing to yourself and connecting yourself with? So, words, language, actions, behavior, you know, how do you feel in these relationships? Here's the thing I've learned. You have to be the friend that you want to be to attract that kind of person to you. So sometimes people say, I want people who are kind and loving and understanding, but they are not kind, loving and understanding. So you're kind of out of integrity. But you have to monitor and look at, you know, some people love you, but they spend most of their time putting you down criticizing you really harshly. You have a dream or an idea, them don't support you. That can't work, you know, nobody, you're not bright enough, dum, 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 dum. That's not necessarily the most healthy relationship. So you have to figure out, and how do I want to feel in a context of a relationship without being selfish, you know, without being greedy, without being demanding of people, but being having clear standards of what you need to feel loved and appreciated and seen because guess what? You're worthy. You're worthy of love and respect. And you should in turn, of course, be being respectful to people and making other people feel worthy. Because our relationships are like kind of the, 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 the fuel for our lives. You know, if you have a support, you have lovely friends and family, people who love you and support you, it's a wonderful tonic to live your best life. So relationships are really, really crucial. So uh, yeah, always monitor the level, the health, how healthy is my relationship? How healthy are my relationships? You know, and whether it is platonic, you know, friend, family, romantic, intimate partner, you want to keep them as healthy as possible. So big people thing, communication, talking openly, sharing feelings, respecting each other. Like, I don't care how angry you get. There's certain thing you know for part of the lips I said to people, no, you can only oh, vex. Mm -mm. Because on some level, you had to think that about me to say that to me. You know, people say, oh, you know, I'm so lucky to be with him. I'm so lucky to be with her. Rubbish. Tappy. Don't let, don't feel like that anybody is this great prize. You are also a prize. Act like it. You're a king. You're a queen. Remind yourself of that. Don't become anybody's doormat or footstool because, oh, you know, them, them, them look nice. They have a six pack, you know. Um, you know, look, look how she turn up. Look at the kind of car they drive. Sometimes we, we kind of pimp out ourselves and our value because somebody represents something to us. You have to re recognize that you are an amazing gift. Not being arrogant, just acknowledging your royalty and your grace. And act accordingly. And you'll draw to you the relationships that you need and even work relationships, professional relationships, relationships in your community. Are they healthy? Are they respectful? Do they give you a vibe and an energy or do they feel heavy? You have to constantly monitor and check these things. Sometimes we also, not sometimes, all the time have to focus on our healing, shedding things, baggage that we don't need. So some things are easy, you know, you come out of a situation, you learn, you grow, you move on. But sometimes things are done or said to us by, by people that we love, by people that say they love us. You know, whether it is verbal abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, molestation, there's a frightening, high, frighteningly high level of that in Jamaica. <coughs> we carry a whole heap of trauma. We're a nation in trauma. So part of the liberty has to be healing and shedding our trauma, identifying it and then addressing it, letting it go. What does that mean? It means that sometimes when your neck are hurt, your shoulder hurt, you, you keep getting these chest pains, it's trauma. No. It means identifying it, naming it, addressing it. It also oftentimes means letting go, forgiving the abuser. Because sometimes the person dead. Sometimes <coughs> you no longer have access to them, they don't have access to you, but you have it up. And it's now affecting your present relationships. Sometimes you have to confront it, deal with it, address it, talk to them, get a third party, you know, have a um, mediation, conflict resolution. Or if you go formal and official to a counselor, to a therapist, to a life coach, whoever, and get work, get help with moving forward. Not that any of these people should be telling you what to do, but should be opening up to you, looking at what is the possibilities 
for healing this trauma, for shedding this baggage, for dealing with it? What is the process? Because you want to be a healthier self. So self-healing is important. So you can then now figure out oh, what kind of relationships am I having? You can assess them in a fair and balanced way and you can figure out what is working for you and what is not working for you. But also, as I said, who am I being? Am I being a good son, an awesome daughter? And I, am I being a loving friend, a respectful colleague or partner? So you can assess yourself because again, I guarantee you, you will draw to you a certain type of people. So it's important to look at the foundation that you build your relationships on. Whether, you know, platonic, friends, intimate partner, husband, wife, whatever, and even children, siblings, relatives. What's the foundation of our relationship? Is it based on respect? Is it based on abuse? Is it based on bullying? You know, because if it's, if it's, if it's on a foundation like that, the rest of the relationship must be shaky, going to be painful, going to be traumatic. So we want the healthiest relationships possible. We want people who see us, who love us, false and all. Yes, they may point out things we need to change, but them love we as we're showing up right now. You see, if you have a friend or your intimate partner who keeps trying to change you, or oh, I will love you if you do this, then them don't love you. They're loving a version of you that may never exist. And it's not that we must be you know, complacent and not do the work, but can you love me as I am right now? You also need relationships that help you want to be better, that challenge you to be your best self even when you don't feel like it. So it's not a, some yes man friend who co-sign every bit of foolishness you do and say them say, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we need some people who challenge us to rise and be our best self. So this was video four. At the end of the, the sequence of videos, I hope it was useful. Big up yourself, enough love, enough respect, all the best. Did I say my name in the beginning? Fabian Thomas, life coach, mentor, and lecturer. Blessings.